As far as I know, I have a first engineering doctorate in solar cooking. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start my talk with a philosophical comment. A uh, distinguished scientist hostile to solar cooking once asked, why are we recommending something that we don't use ourselves? And by the we, I'm guessing he meant civilized nations. Um, would civilized nations avoid energy sources that are unreliable because of the weather? Are civilized nations too advanced or sophisticated to use clean sources of energy? Is renewable energy only appropriate in remote places? Or places that lack access to infrastructure? I wonder if you consider Germany a civilized nation. Germany broke two records last month. On Friday, June 6, 2014, the highest ever uh, 26, I'm sorry, 24.24 gigawatts of electricity were made by solar photovoltaic. And on Monday, June, June 9th, more than half of their grid load was coming from the sun. <laughs> Germany is a cloud infested place. And if they can occasionally meet half their electrical energy needs with solar, is it foolish to suggest that other countries might occasionally meet their cooking energy needs with solar? Germany is not afraid or ashamed to preach the solar gospel. I think we need to preach it too. And to help, I have this vision. This is the rough draft. I stole all these pictures from Tom Sponheim's web pages. It would be a, a booklet and perhaps a website we could direct people to who are skeptical that would feature successes with solid numbers. And that's what I'm asking for your help. We have assembled here people who know what those numbers are. And we need to, we need to kind of share them with each other. Um, the largest number of cookers ever produced of one design, I believe, is this one. The clean development mechanism of the Kyoto Protocol means that the numbers are being audited and kept track of because money's changing hands. This remarkable photo was in the National Geographic 12 years ago, without comment. Another design that succeeded half a million, made by several, about 40 different companies, following Indian Standard 13429, because they get a state and federal government subsidy. A friend of mine from India said some of the manufacturers have stopped requesting the reimbursement and has said, modify their designs to better meet the needs of the market, and their sales have actually gone up. So a lot more cookers have been sold in India than just what you see here. Okay, the, the uh, world's least expensive solar cooker. Solar Cookers International played a, uh, <laughs> the key pivotal role in designing this. Um, eight projects and various NGOs around the world have either imported or have produced locally these SCI cookets. In casual economies, it's difficult to keep track of how many have been made. Um, but if anybody has been associated with any project that has used these, you know, getting those details to Tom would really help us catalog information. Uh, Solar Cookers International has done a good job of keeping track of some of the numbers. So we know, for example, that the Kukuma Refugee Camp, 80,000 were produced during the time that that project was active, and so on and so forth. But some of the data needs to be verified and, and updated. Barbara Kerr developed the solar cooker. Dave Barr was here. He saw it being used in a parking lot at a grocery store. Anyone who made one? How do we keep track of the numbers when you know it's 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 casual things like that? Or people download it from the web, um, download the plans. I don't know how to do the numbers on that, but it'd be nice to be able to get a good guess. Uh, Tom Burns in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, started a company back in the '80s. It's now run by Paul Munson. Um, when I called Paul, he said they were at uh, serial number 80,000 and something, so that's, that's a good number. This company in China has been making a cast iron reflector. They, they coat the cast iron with uh, reflective film. Their website is five years old, and it's at 80,000. I'd love to hear what the update is. An NGO in Somalia is run by a woman who herself was a refugee a few years ago, and she's been using those. Love her statistics on charcoal consumption. That's a, that's a good, that's the kind of numbers we need because carbon credits are worth money and that's how we can pay for the solar purpose. Dr. Seifert, Dr. Seifert in Germany um, 
For 157 days, his wife, Emma, cooked all the family meals using their 1.4 meter SP-14 in cloudy Germany. You cannot accuse the Seiferts of recommending technology they're not using themselves. He trains local artisans to make them, and so he says he really doesn't know how many are being used at this point in time. Here's one in a Nepali NGO. Makes, and they've added a new windshield, so there's, there's an innovation continuing. Uh, 650 here, perhaps thousands more in the future. We need updates. Uh, Mike and Martha Port, who send their greetings and the regrets that they weren't able to come first with. Um, they were making these with recycled plastic from soda pop bottles. Coca-Cola Company and Pepsi Cola, normally uh, rivals, cooperated to fund the mold. John Roach, a retired engineer from 3M, designed the reflectors. He's the guy that made solar film. Intiset, another project. Uh, well, 14,000. I don't know if the 14,000 is just Bolivia or if that's worldwide. But I love their quote. For us women, the solar cooker loosed the bonds of slavery that were around our necks for millennia. These sound bites carry a lot of impact. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to show people, hey, here's another one. I wish I knew the guy's name, how many he sold, et cetera. New companies that are making solar covers, you know, if we're going to get them into the hands of everyone that has sunshine, we're going to have to have a lot of companies making them. Here's a startup. One Earth Design worked with Tibetan nomads to refine their product. When they got on Kickstarter to get the capital to start their company, they reached their funding goal almost instantly. Here's a restaurant in Chile, 120 people a day without cutting down trees. Largest solar cookers in the world are uh, Wolfgang Shepherd's Kiva uh, stats. They follow the sun and they keep it. Uh, here's a successful project. I'm going to use this to introduce our next speaker, I guess. Grace Magni and her late husband Gordon made solar cookers for Afghan refugees in Pakistan. They had a good design, they had good customer support and good customer service. And when we saw these being made and sold in the markets of Kabul, it's like this project is successful. The technology is transferred into the local economy. It's running on its own. That's the only way we're going to get everybody in the world. Solar cooking works. If you have data and statistics, there's Tom right there. And there's his address. Webmaster, I'm sorry, it's webmaster at solar.org. <laughs>